Marawachanga, Gana Mira and Awangani, Mani to Budni Gani Adana. Nibirko, Mankalankala, Tandanya, Mianaku. Nature Yungandalia, Nature Yakanandalia, Padni Adlu Wadu. On behalf of the Ghana people, I welcome you all to Ghana country, and I do this ambassador of the Adelaide Plains people. My brothers, my sisters, let's walk together in harmony. They've asked me to talk a little bit about education, because uh, I don't know if many people know this, but Ghana people were educators. We, uh, as Ghana males, had to be educated for 25 years and do five initiations. Of course, this is in the old days, it's not now, because as you know, a lot of our language was taken away and a lot of our e uh, education system broken down. But uh, I can tell you this, this society, Aboriginal society, had the highest education in the world for the populace. And I've got a couple of little books here that tell you that, because my kids said to me, Dad, don't give us that oral history stuff, give us the facts. <laughs> and so, here are some of the facts. This little book was written in 1969 by Dr. Penny. He was the principal of uh, Wattle Park Ed Teacher Education Program. And he wrote this little book, said, traditional people and educated people. So that's one little snippet. But then there's another little factor here. I don't know if people know that this little school was on the banks of the Torrens by the Weir and it was called Built a Wadley in the native location. And the German missionaries taught our kids in Ghana language for six years. And in this book, we got these letters translated from old German. And number four letter tells you this. The German man closed a one of the teachers. He said, these kids are no different from any kids I taught in Europe, only they're black and wear no clothes. Well, he's talking about rich kids. These are kids off the street, and not only that, they read and wrote in Ghana language, and they also wrote letters to Germany in Ghana language. And uh, so you can see, I come from an educated group, and I knew that when I was a child. And maybe I should give you some of the lessons I had to do as a child, and some of the structures, how, how our education system was so good for the populace. Because there's nothing wrong with this education system in, the, in this country, because they say it's not broken, why worry about fixing it? But I think they don't follow the full issue here. It's the populace, because anyone provides their brains at the top and it'll run their country and they'll manage very nicely on the 30%. But not many people worry about the 70% below. And that's what we're talking about here. That's where the difference lies. And and I always think of how people could have educated the populace, why don't we do that today to a certain level? Because everyone should manage their own affairs, everyone should be able to read and write and do things that manage their affairs. But we don't have that, we have a lot of casualties in this community, which I feel saddened about. But anyway, let me tell you what my grandmother said to me when I was three. Well, first of all, she sat me on a log and started telling me a story. And like all kids, I said, Graham, what about this? And she said, tut, tut, tut. And she walked away and left me on the log. And I sat there bewildered because she's getting me to think about it. She's getting me to think all these sorts of things like, why is my grand leaving me? And what have I done wrong? And anyway, the next day she sits me down again, tells me another story and I do the same thing. And she said, tut, tut, and leaves me again and walks off. Well, the third day I'm clever enough to bite my tongue and listen to the end of the story and I go, wow. I thought that was very good. And then I realised what she taught me. And that's what this Aboriginal society is about, listening. And so she taught me to listen. And we have a word about that. Urian Ganendi, inquiring with the ears, deep listening. And that's what they're on about. They're teaching you to deeply listen in the very beginning. And when you read books on education, they tell you, if you learn to listen, you get accelerated learning. Because how can you tell people what you know and chat all the time if you've never listened and learned anything? And so there you see the equation. And so I saw what our people did to us all the time with all these little exercises. And so when I went to school in the city, at about seven years of age, I went to Ethelton Primary. And I saw all the kids holding up their hand, please sir, ask me, and, and can I ask the question? And I thought, very little learning goes on here. 
See, because everyone's questioning, and I wonder why schools do that to young kids. Why should they be asking questions and getting quick, easy answers? And that's what breaks people down. I've even seen that upset kids with brilliance, because what brilliant kids learn to do is read the quick, easy answer in the book. Then they become lazy, and I've even heard university professors say, I don't want no clever kids. They don't work hard enough. The normal, able, hard-working child will always succeed because he has to work harder at his job. Now, that's sad in one way, because you know he's going to get there, but look at the top. You've got the brilliant kid will drop off because he, he wants quick, easy answers and don't like working, and the lazy kid at the bottom does the same. And so you can see where the problems lie because we look at everything. We learn to observe. And that's another thing we find in society, that people look and we learn to observe by a piece of string. And maybe I should show you the difference. <laughs> That's if I got the string with me, but we just hang on a minute. And I'll show you how we learn. And people see us with a string and they say, oh, you play games, do you? And see, we learn conversational factors. And when you say that, you're trying to tell me it's lesser than. Then I look at you and think, haven't you learned through play? Don't you know the difference? Because our people had a very interesting statement about the string. They said, it's not what you use, it's the way you use your, what you've got makes the difference. And the difference is this, and I'll show you how you learn and how I learn. When you go to school, you're taught by instruction to put the right in front of the left, put it in your mouth, left over right, it'll go between your finger. You've solved a problem, taken the mystery out of the string, into the ball game. And you say, that's all that's about. And we look at you and think, is that right? <laughs> and so we say, now we'll change the rules. You watch what I do, then try and do it and see if you can. And then we do things like this. And then we say, now you've done that, do this. I'm 84 and I can still do that. Why? Because I had to work at it. Because learning to look with your eyes is a pretty difficult job to do. And I had to spend three or four months at it. But what are we trying to do here? We're trying to reduce it down one month, two months, one week, one hour. What we're going to aim at is two minutes. My art is to look at you and see what you're doing for two minutes and then do it. And this is the ultimate. Now, I learnt that off a picture called The Horse Whisperer. Robert Renford does that in the film. I watched him do it and I can do what he does. He can't stop me learning. He's there, he can't talk to me, I can't talk to him, but he can't stop me learning. Because I've learnt the art of observation because there's more in life than we can throw a stick, and now people knew that. The quickest way to do it is learn to observe and watch every step, not just have a quick look. I taught that around schools for a number of years, I think 30 years in all, only one class seen the difference. And the teacher came to me, she said, they understand what you're talking about. I said, yes, yeah. she said, you know what they are? I said, no, she said, they're all musicians because musicians have to learn to observe. And not only that, they wrote an essay for me, each of those students, and they said we learned 11 things, not one. And then we have a fanciful suffix, which is nindi. And nindi says you can transform from one state to another, meaning you can learn from the string and not just play games with string and say that's all you can do. We say no, we can take from the string, then I can watch you, I can watch a machine, I can watch animals, I can watch the thing in the environment and watch everything that's going on around me. So you see there's a lot in life we need to learn and learn from each other and I hope you've gained something from what I've told you. Thank you.